So now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Kristen Flores. Uh, she was my colleague at UW-Stevens Point, and now she works with the Forest Service. Let's have a hand for Eric. Thank you. It's always kind of frightening following Eric as a speaker because he's so engaging and so great, and so thank you. I'm excited to listen to that. So I'm going to talk about Kara and um, Eric covered a lot of their organizational um, capacity building and some of the stuff that they're doing with other people. And I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is what I think about something. And so what I did for my project for this fellowship was I looked at systems thinking in the landscape scale conservation context in the U.S. Forest Service. And so what I wanted to do, what I aimed to do, was to develop a template for planning, monitoring, and evaluation of these really large and complex types of projects across landscapes that we we engage in as part of the Forest Service. So we work in the Forest Service at the landscape scale all the time. We do it to protect communities from wildfire and our community wildfire protection plans. We look at um, providing clean, abundant, healthy drinking water for communities. That little map over there, you can see all that blue, that is the water, that um, surface drinking water, that forests, and much of that is national forests, um, provide to us uh, as humans in this, in this country. So we do lots of that kind of work. People, I know that Eric last night actually asked at dinner, he's like, the Forest Service does landscape scale work across boundary. I was like, yes, indeed we do. Let me talk about that. My favorite thing, what I think about that, some more. So this quote up here, which I'll read to you because I know the room is really long, but it is a quote from our now two former chiefs ago, Tom Tidwell, who said, the challenge before us with landscape scale conservation is this, to break old habits of thinking, which is something that we've been talking about quite a bit as part of this fellowship, and work across boundaries to sustain, conserve, and protect the forests we all share. But our forests, if some of you might know, were created our national forest system to protect drinking water and to protect our drinking water supplies. They're integra integrally uh, connected. But I'm not going to spend all of my time talking about that because this, this uh, presentation really isn't about landscape scale conservation. Again, it's about what I think about things. So we'll be talking about error. Specifically, we'll be talking about distinction error. And if you're someone like me, and many of you probably are, you tend to see everything in the world as connected, right? Like 100% of everything on the face of the planet is all tied together, and I want to kind of lump it all together like Derek was talking about er earlier. So when you're that kind of person like me who sees all of those connections, but you have no system to organize it, it can become really difficult. And you have lots of misnomers and calling things the same thing that aren't or, or vice versa, right? So I needed that system, and um, that's what I did. So these are the foundations of collaboration, which are not distinct concepts. So I was told by my research station director when I got to the Forest Service that I was to work on landscape scale conservation and they wanted this report on landscape scale conservation. They wanted them organized by these concepts. These are not distinct um, to me and you'll see that in a second with some of the definitions, but there's lots of overlap. So I'm going to just give you one little example. There's some like blued out words here. Don't pay attention to the blued out ones, just the highlighted ones, which nobody can see anyway, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. But on the top, you'll see one of our foundations was information, and part of that defini definition was information sharing. So that's great. We're going to share information with each other across boundaries. Wonderful. But hey, we're also going to share lessons and communicate about that, because those are super different from each other. Well, I guess if we look more fully into the, the full definition, perhaps they do become more clear, and then it's like, okay, so let's look at some of that blued out stuff. Well, information. We're going to share information about adaptive, ma about adaptive management. We're also going to communicate about our common goals, because... Goals have nothing to do with management. We would never have those things together. Totally distinct? No, not really. So um, what we, I started doing was thinking about this because I was like, you know, it's probably not all of these higher ups in the Forest Service who are talking about these foundations of collaboration who have a problem. It's really probably me. I'm the kind of person who literally Googles, how do I clean out my closet? Okay, because it's all just like one giant pile of stuff. I don't know if any of you have closets like that or cabinets, anything, but I do. So, you know, you Google this, you're like, how do I do this? And you're supposed to have these piles, right? I'm supposed to have this pile of, oh, this stuff needs to be fixed. This needs to go to the dry cleaner. This is stuff I'm going to give away. And this is stuff I'm going to hang back up. But I don't have those piles, right? I have one pile of everything I'm going to keep and hopefully we'll hang up again one day. And then every pile of, you know, another pile of everything else, which is the things that need buttons and need to be dry cleaned. And I need to profess my gratitude and love to before I donate it to Goodwill. Um, so those are my piles that I have, you know, one pile of 20-second stuff that takes 20 seconds to deal with, 
and everything else. But maybe that's not the best rule. Maybe having 20 seconds, um, those two piles is not the best because I just shove those into my corner, which probably other people do, right? And you've got that thing next to your dresser, just giant pile of crap that one day you'll hopefully deal with. Maybe within a year, or perhaps when one of your children co-ops it for their dress-up trunk, or your husband just demands that you do something with it. But essentially, that's what I did with my landscape scale conservation work until I started this fellowship, was I just kind of like shoved it in a corner of files of, on my computer and just tried to ignore it until somebody said, hey, you've got a report on that, Kristen. You know, we can't just leave it there. So I did eventually, um, oh, that was my slide for that. So I did eventually start working on this um, and start working on my uh, organizing this information. And so over the next few slides, you're going to go through kind of the evolution of models and thinking about these distinctions that I had aimed to do with this project. Um, and I don't really want you to pay attention to the words. That will only be a problem, I think, for this first table. But just blur out, don't worry, unfocus on that stuff, and we'll just look at what they look like from a distance. So. This was my first attempt to take those foundations of collaboration that I'd been handed and to try to make more meaningful distinctions. And I did this by looking at criteria for effective collaboration and partnerships that I was really familiar with from having done watershed management for quite a long time. So more circles, more distinctions than in those foundations, but still not quite there, because I realized, oh, you know what? Actually, all of that stuff is really part of the adaptive management cycle, right? I mean, effective partnerships, that's part of the things that make adaptive management work. And that all that stuff from that previous slide all fits into this little teeny orange box on this one, which is monitoring. We have to collect some information about partnership diversity and what we're doing, and do we have a shared mission? So this isn't quite right either. Now here, we, start to, we started using the Plectic or Venom map tools, and I was able to kind of map these things out a little bit more clearly and really start to tie that, those steps of adaptive management in with um, effective partnerships because those, it's people doing management. It's not, it's not just happening out there. So I'm getting closer. We start to see those relationships. Now it's becoming even more um, tied together with the different relationships and how they're all related, the kind of recursive networks um, between these and relationships between these different factors that can impact landscape scale conservation. And I think this is just brilliant because it's the snail shape, the golden ratio. So this is the snail model of landscape scale conservation that I eventually settled on. Um, and we have, everything isn't exploded in this, right? But you do, do see that, oh, I got a little distorted. But in the middle here, we have the successful landscape scale conservation that's dependent upon actors carrying out stewardship actions, which are supported or constrained by policies, plans, and authorities. And that actually sounds very similar to a lot of what Kara talked about in hers. So I was like, Kara, yes, we're on the same wavelength here. But I guess I did lie a little bit. This is about landscape scale conservation. That's what this presentation really is about, not just me. Um, but I did need to get to that point where I you know, separate out those piles of laundry. Maybe I realized that my map in the system didn't look like a strange bicycle without handlebars, but I really did get to this point. I was like, okay, this is a system of things that can be related and that can be shown visually on this map. And really at any point in the adaptive management cycle, somebody who's doing landscape scale conservation, whether they're planning it out, they're in the middle of it, they're going, trying to do evaluation, they should be able to enter this template and fill it out, essentially, and populate it with their own stuff that's going on in their own forest and their own landscape and see where they are. And that's what we're doing. So this is where we are now, which is that it's just been presented for the first time. This is the second time I've talked about this. Um, and I'll be working with people across the three mission areas of the Forest Service, which is state and private forestry, research and development, where I'm from, and then the national forest system, to really try to test this model on several different national forests as we go through landscape scale planning. And I talked quite quickly, which is a, an odd thing for me, but I think we're going to take questions now for all three of us.